Good afternoon, Peter Gertz, I'm a psychiatrist. Obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD. Is it healthy for human beings to want total certainty? Maybe not, at least at times. I remember when I was a late teen, age 19, early 20s, friends of mine to this day will probably remember that sometimes I'd leave my house, they'd come over to hang out, we'd leave, and then I'd think, oh, did I lock the door? And it's hard to be certain because if you're not there in front of the door, you can't check it out. So that was an issue that may have been connected with me being on my own for the first time at age 19, but it's a common type of thing that people can struggle with. We want to differentiate OCD from obsessive compulsive personality disorder, so OCPD, which is a personality disorder. So these people do not have necessarily obsessions or compulsions, but they're orderly, perfectionistic, scrupulous, have traits in that direction of being very focused on perfection. Again, the certainty issue, but in a different way with the personality disorder. And often nowadays, medications are prescribed for OCD. For example, SSRIs, I've seen effects are prescribed, so an SNRI. Clomipramine can be used, an older tricyclic antidepressant. And <clears throat> other things have been used, TMS, so transcranial magnetic simulation, DBS, deep brain simulation even, even surgery, anterior cingulotomy, also electro electroconvulsive therapy, ECT has been used, so people can get quite desperate from OCD, really suffer enormously that can rule their lives basically, really interfere with their enjoying their life. Behavioral treatment can be very successful. What generally is done is exposure and response prevention. So if someone is, has obsessions and compulsions regarding cleanliness, you may want to get them in the habit of getting their hands dirty and not washing them, <laughs> at least for an extended period. So that's the exposure and then the response prevention, no hand washing allowed. So that can feel like torture, of course, to people, at least initially. But if you persist, it seems to maybe even rewire your brain to the point that the whole process becomes easier and people do not suffer at least as much from obsessions and compulsions. Another aspect that I addressed last week in the video is being in the moment. And in my opinion, that can really help with many things, but also with obsessions and compulsions, because if we're not thinking, you're not gonna obsess. So being in the moment, being involved in what you're doing, being totally present, at least as much as possible in what you're doing, can prevent ruminating, thinking, obsessing, and then the resulting compulsions. So we wanna get in the habit, if possible, of refusing the invitation of these thoughts to indulge in them. So let's say you have the issue that I mentioned, you leave the house and lock your door, and then you wonder two minutes later when you've just driven off in the car, did I lock my door? So you wanna get in the habit of refusing the invitation of those thoughts that lead you to doubt. And basically, like I said initially, we probably wanna <clears throat> go more in the direction of accepting uncertainty we're often in life not gonna be 100% certain about one thing or another. So the more we can get used to that, the more, the less we're gonna suffer with striving from, striving for certainty and then being anxious due to possible obsessions and then 
those obsessions might lead to compulsions. Bottom line, in, an other wor in other words, if we can get out of our head, that can help a lot. So getting out of our head, into our bodies, for example, focusing on a certain part of your, your, your body, like fingers, heart, any part of your body can get you out of your head, into your body, and focusing on breathing can do the same thing. And by doing that, we're not going to be at least a lot less likely to engage in obsessing. And these things are simple, but of course not easy. And changing our habits, changing our thinking habits can really be an exercise in endurance and persistence. So just like I mentioned with the exposure and response prevention, we want to persist and as much as possible tolerate distress. So <clears throat> with the issue with someone getting their hands dirty who has, uh, has obsessions about cleanliness, you want to get to the point where you get your hands dirty and tolerate the frustration or the difficulty with having your hands be dirty without washing them. And that can, like I said, that can feel like torture. So one potential way of looking at this is an analogy. Let's say you're a little boy and on your way to school every day, a bully comes up and steals your lunch. And that's something, of course, you don't want. So if you stand up to that bully so he doesn't steal your lunch, that can make your life a whole lot easier, but it takes persistence. You know, the bully may come again and again. It takes persistence, at least potentially, and it takes some ability to tolerate distress because you may be fearful of confronting the bully. It's a new ball game for you to confront a bully, for instance, but in the long run, with that persistence, that can really change your life for the better. Thank you.